How are you everyone? Welcome to our first meeting. Uh, um, our first online lecture, which is a completion of uh, yesterday's lecture. And first of all, as usual, let me check if you are here. And if you listen to me, if you can hear my voice. Okay. Are you there? Everyone? Hello? Hear me, everyone? Shabib? The many? No, we need to start, we need to get started. I am not going to start unless you tell me that you are okay. Hello? طيب ما تنطقوا تكلموا يعني مش فاهم والله ليه ما تتكلموش. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I, I want to hear your voice. I want to, to make sure that you are already there. تمام؟ Who's my... You mean my mic? My mic is open, and some people said uh, you are uh, there and you hear me. And I'm the mic. I'm not sure. The same. Okay. Meeting. Not meeting. Okay. Here. No one is muted, you are all open. The sound is fine, no problem here, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to mute anyone. I'm not going to mute Let me hear your voice, let me check with you if you already uh, can exchange things, questions, you, that you can hear me. I'm not going to mute anyone. So please let me know if you can already hear me. Amen? مش عامل ميوت لحد كلكم شغالين ها انا مش معطل المايك ولا حاجه
type. Okay, can you uh, watch uh, the PowerPoint presentation that I have uh, uploaded? That one. You see it now. طيب اديكم خمس دقايق نظبط الدنيا فيها وارجع لكم تاني ان شاء الله وانتم كمان تظبطوا المايكات اوكي
<clears throat> okay, assalamu alaikum. Are you there? I'm back now. You should be able to hear Hello, me. Hello, Dr. Saman yeah, That's great. Okay, and what about the PowerPoint presentation? I'm going to Okay, one more second. Now you should see it. So we can start our lecture. بالنسبة للناس اللي ما دخلتش أنا بعمل لها admittance كل شوية بيجي لي طلبات وبدخلها في الميتين. ها شايفين ال بتاع ال PowerPoint now مش كده؟ Hello. اه يا دكتور تمام زي ماشي هنبدا بسم الله now, um, characteristics of Victorian short fiction, how Victorian short fiction managed to act as a mirror of the age and the properties of the short story, especially the single effect, uh, all the above with examples, of course. And I told you before that uh, uh, that was last time, uh, which was yesterday. I, I just told you that uh, the single effect is one essential element of our course, one essential constituent which you have to understand uh, very well if you uh, want to understand uh, all examples uh, in the book uh, of stories like the betrothed children for example okay uh, Today's lecture uh, has uh, uh, two parts. The first part is theoretical. Hanakut fi had a single effect by Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe, wada magud fi al goz al nazari min al kitab. You have to check. You have to read. My job is not to explain every word. Uh, you are now grown-ups, as we agreed uh, before many times. Um, uh, the theoretical section at the start, and then we will continue with the story. Uh, to see if we can finish it today or not. Uh, you must know that uh, the online lectures are not uh, repetitive. They do not repeat what we had in the actual lectures, but they continue on uh, these lectures. They develop the lectures and they continue. Uh, next uh, slide uh, is this. Um, um, before we take the single effect, just a reminder of the differences between the first half of the uh, 19th century and the second half of the first half talked about poverty. Then, uh, broadly uh, speaking, generally speaking, the second half would talk about the wealth of England as a very wealthy uh, nation that was the empire over which the sun never set. First half talking about hunger, while the second half talking about satiety or the abundance of uh, food and of wealth and of fortune. Uh, first half talking about diseases, the other one talking about welfare. Try to study these things. They will, they, you will find them quite interesting. And you have a table uh, in the book that lists all uh, these uh, things in a very uh, interesting way. Uh, there was pollution in the first half, but things improved in the second. Uh, they talked all the time about colonialism and about the power of England over other nations, but they began to be interested only in uh, local things like the capital city, which is London. Later on in the second half, the language was complex and archaic. It became a lot easier in the second half for hackers. All right. 
Now, this is the uh, single effect. Before uh, uh, talking profoundly about the single effect, um, this is what Edgar Allan Poe said about the novel. Why did he uh, talk about uh, the short story? Because he objected to the novel. Uh, the novel was about a hundred, uh, um, let me say, oh yes, a hundred uh, years old before the advent of Ed Edgar Allan Poe in the States, in the United States of America, in the year exactly 1839. He came up with the, the short story as a new genre. He came up also with his uh, uh, concoction or, or his um, idea of the single effect. But let us uh, study things one by one. Uh, he says that the ordinary novel is objectionable from its length. That is to say, it, he objected to the novel because it was very long. And that was not suitable enough for the reading public at his time. For reasons already stated in substance, the substance of the short story being short and compact uh, could be more appealing to the reading public, but the substance of the novel is bulky and uh, large and incomprehensible and it, it had to be read with difficulty. Also, it cannot be read at one sitting. You, you could not read uh, the novel in one sitting, Fabitelli. Uh, this represents a great deal of difficulty and uh, it involves a great deal of repetition and a great deal of contradiction, as we uh, said before. Uh, Omen Hena, he uh, objected to that. It deprives itself, of course, of the immense force derivable from totality. So totality is one advantage of the short story and that totality is not the advantage, is not to the advantage of uh, the novel. Worldly interest intervening during the poses of perusal modify, annul, or contract in a greater or less degree the impressions of the book. Uh, worldly interest, we all have uh, worldly interests. We all have our own problems. We cannot um, uh, keep reading a book like a novel that is 500 pages, for example, uh, from the very first last page without any interruption we need to go to work, you, know, you need to go out to the market or uh, on family visits, and this uh, interrupts the process of reading. And the more you are interrupted and the more you uh, peruse it, that is to say reading carefully, you have to come back to the novel again and then you modify things and the writer modifies things, you annul or uh, you remove parts or you forget parts, uh, do you understand, you make short certain parts in uh, the uh, text itself, Fabitelli, all the impressions will be modified or removed or contracted. That is to say, if you compare the short story to the novel, the novel suffers from length, it suffers from the fact that it cannot be read in one sitting, uh, and it, it is not, it does not give us the sense, the impression of totality. Uh, which is available also in the short story. So according to him, the short story is better because it is short, it can be read at one set setting, it has totality, and nothing is lost to the reader. Next. But simple cessation, stoppage, if you stop reading the novel midway through, uh, would uh, of itself be sufficient to destroy the true unity. And in literature in general, the idea of totality and unity, the unity of time, action, and place that has been talked about by Aristotle, for example, is uh, something that all writers and critics focused on. Uh, if you stop in the middle, like in reading uh, a novel, that kind of unity suffers because of that stoppage. In the brief tale, which is the short story, man, However, the author is enabled to carry out the fullness of his intention. That is to say, the writer is going to drive home and through his point of view without anyone interrupting him. There is no interruption. Be it what it may, I can an interruption there uh, because you left uh, the novel for... Uh, I would like to mute you because I, uh, I have... Uh, Sounds like this that are quite disturbing. 
Okay, one second. Menshi, Halas Kolo, and Mio Lobby. I'm admitting everyone, yani, though you should be admitted automatically. Uh, uh, I have messages that people are in the lobby and uh, uh, I uh, admit everyone. I do not prevent or the, uh, anyone from uh, joining the lecture. Okay. So, uh, simple cessation, stoppage, interruption will, uh, of course, detract from the true unity of the work of art. In the short story, the author is enabled to carry out the fullness of his intention. He is going to uh, uh, achieve what he had or what he planned at the back of his mind without anyone interrupting him. So his intention is there all the time and he can do it. Be it what it may, during the hour of perusal, uh, uh, that is to say close reading, if you read uh, the short story okay, uh, carefully and notice uh, the word perusal. He doesn't say the hour of reading, but the hour of perusal, because when you read a short story, uh, then you have to read it carefully, and you have to be aware of the nuances of meaning. You have to be aware of the differences between phrases and words and sentences, and of the full meaning of metaphors, for example, or figures of speech, and of the shades of meaning that are uh, hidden there beyond the superficial reading of the text. So you have to peruse, and the noun is perusal. Uh, the soul, look at this, the soul of the reader is at the writer's control. That is to say, uh, who is in full control? The writer. Who is controlled? The reader. The soul of the reader is in a Okay, you, it is breathtaking. You, you cannot take your breath uh, because the writer possesses that can grab your attention that can uh, make you engaged all the time with what he uh, has uh, on mind there are no external or extrinsic influences resulting from weariness or interruption nothing can interrupt uh, the uh, uh, right the reader of the short story whether external or extrinsic or internal uh, uh, and there is no weariness and there is no interruption and you have to take it in all of the uh, purport of the author uh, is apparent, is obvious, is implicit, is accessible to you as a reader uh, because of the substance of the short story which lends itself easily to uh, the reader. So one question according to Edgar Allan Poe, why is the novel objectionable? These questions uh, belong to or uh, revolve around the previous uh, slides that talk about differences between uh, a long text like the novel and a short text like the short story. Also talk about totality and unity from this, from his point of view as essential features of the short story, something which the novel fails to achieve. Of course, in the novel there is no uh, such totality or unity, the unity that writers have been talking about all the time since Aristotle, the genesis of time, place, and action. Time, place, and action that should be avail available in every piece of art and every work of art, right? Um, and then let's move on. Uh, pay attention, please, to this section, which is most important, right? A skillful, uh, again, I'm reading from a uh, part of the book that uh, talks about. Uh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe's theory of the short story, and that you can find uh, actually when um, or write uh, a theory of the short story, page 18 onwards. Page 18 onwards, you have all this in the book. A skillful literary artist has constructed a tale. Let's imagine uh, that there is a, a, a very um, skilled or clever uh, author or novelist or short story writer and he's called him an artist he has to be an artist he has to have a vision he has to have to have um 
tämä Hänning. Yes, vision, uh, uh, imagination, he has to have that kind of perspective. If wise, that is to say, if he is wise, if that literary artist is wise, he has not fashioned his thoughts to accommodate his incidents, but having conceived with deliberate care a certain unique or single effect to be a uh, single effect to be wrought out, he then invents as many best aid him as may best aid him in establishing this preconceived effect. That is to say, he should start with a preconceived effect. He has something, he should have something at the back of his mind that he wants to communicate to the reader. And for that effect, he plans the whole work of art uh, in order to achieve that kind of effect, right? Even in his very initial sentence, everything has to be clear cut. Everything has to be uh, uh, subservient and look at my words, subservient to the idea and to the whole um, endeavor, which is the short story. Even the, the, the title, even the choice of characters, the choice of, of the setting, the initial setting, the very first uh, sentin sentence, like uh, uh, the very first line that we read yesterday about the kite, uh, the short story written by Somerset Moon, when he said, uh, uh, this is a very odd uh, story, I don't understand it myself, and I wonder if you uh, are going to understand it too. Uh, uh, that establishes the tone of the short story. That takes you by the throat. It takes you. Uh, it makes your soul under the control of the author. Then not to the outbringing of this effect. Yani if he fails to make the very first initial sentence, uh, uh, okay, short of uh, conveying his effect, then he is a failure in in his first step. So beware, as a writer of the short story, of this. You have to be effective, you have uh, to be relevant from the very first point or the very first sentence of the story. In the whole composition, uh, in the whole short story, there should be, like is my, in the whole short story, there should be no words written of which the tendency direct or indirect is not to the one pre-established design. One pre-established design. And هو بيعمل design اللي هو short story عارف هو هيعمل ايه وهيوصلنا لايه فبالتالي ما فيش كلمة no word written سواء direct or indirect بعيدة عن هذا design أو بعيدة عن هذا الجول يبقى every single word زي ما تقولك حتى the choice of the title حتى الجملة الأولانية والجملة الختامية وكله كله كله لازم سواء direct or indirect لازم يوصلنا لايه السنجل effect ده a single effect اللي هو الهدف المرجو من كتابة القصة دي and by such means with such care and skill يبقى this is the means, this is the technique, this is the framework and the writer himself has to be careful and has to be skillful فبالتالي ان نتيجة بها there is a picture drawn by him at length at last painted, not written I feel أول خالص قال ايه artist you understand and what does an artist do he paints rather Paints taban best with words. Painting for us with words a very lovely, interesting, comprehensive, relevant uh, picture of the topic at hand, which lives in the mind of him who contemplates it, with a kindred art, a sense of the fullest satisfaction. Once you read and finish the short story, you feel very relieved, you feel very satisfied. Uh, do you understand? satiated and like says with uh, shabba uh, we been uh, fan and you understood and grasped everything that the writer wants to say the idea of the tale has been presented unblemished because undisturbed means it by the short story in no effect of total unblemished un uh, uh, intact uh, unaffected and <laughs> 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 البيت جي بيضه خالص يعني ظاهر لي حاجه ممكن يكون من نت ولا ايه طب نشوف زمايلك يعني حد تاني ظهر ظهر عنده نفس الكلام مش شايف الباوربوينت اه كلنا كده كلكم مش ها لا يا دكتور 
موجودة عندي أنا زهرة عندي عادي طيب اللي زهرة لا هي زهرة عندي عادي ما دام ظاهرة موجودة عادي يبقى لو ما سمحتوا تشيك يور كونكشن ما عندي موجودة برضه ممكن النت عندكم بقى اه شوفوا عندكم اعملوا ريستارت مثلا للنت نفسها لشبكة النت هي زهرة متابعين الأول عشان نسيت الكلام الـ 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 طيب يا دكتور معلش هي المحاضرة متسجلة؟ هتتسجل اه وتنزل طبعا طب في الكتاب يا دكتور ممكن نمشي مع حضرتك في الكتاب لو هي مش ظاهرة مثلا؟ هي هتتسجل وتطلع عندكم على طول على ال... هتبعت لكم في الايميل ان شاء الله تمام. اوكي. أنا قلت لكم يعني المكان بتاعها في الكتاب. يعني لو أنت معاكي الكتاب هنا دي صفحة 19. It's it's page 18. 19. أيوة شكرا. And the following pages. Alright. For those who uh, have a problem with the presentation, please check your book. The idea of the tale has been presented unspoiled, yeah, and unblemished because undisturbed. لانه يعني دفقة واحدة وعنده فكرة واحدة بيوصلها بتكنيكس المختلفة عشان هو إنسان clever. No disturbance زي في الرواية. And with نفس الكلام مع the reader. When the reader begins perusing or examining or exploring the short story itself, he is not disturbed. It's just one page or two or three or four. And this is an end. This is an objective, a goal uh, unattainable by the novel that the novel cannot achieve. Undue brevity is just as exceptionable here as in the poem, but undue length is yet more to be avoided. It can be very brief, uh, uh, like a poem, but that exceptional away. يعني تبقى معقولة مش لازم تبقى مثلا four lines. يعني ده ده هيبقى صعب بتبقى بتنتقل إلى حاجة تانية اسمها very short short story. احنا بنتكلم عن شور ستوري اللي هي a few pages. اما uh, uh, undue length بقى الطول الغير المناسب ده مش مطلوب خالص in a short story لانها هتبقى زي الرواية. Again, one question relating to Poe's concept of the short story. Which comes first, action or thought? يعني هو يكتب ولا يفكر الأول؟ يعمل plan الأول ولا يفكر في اللي هو عايز يعمله الأول؟ طبعا he should think first what he wants to uh, do and then design, he would design a, a plan. or a framework for the short story in order for that framework to achieve what he has planned in the first place. Okay? That can be the PowerPoint presentation. Okay? Okay. Now let's see if we can move on with the story itself. Okay? Are you there? Still following? Are you a doctor? Yes. All right. Yes. Now, by F in page one four nine in the book, and um, uh, remember the um, servant, the black servant who uh, put her great black thumb. in the mouth of the crying baby. And at that time, uh, I told you that there is a footnote, a footnote at the bottom of the page that says, don't you think that the story is rather long? And why uh, is it that long? We command uh, uh, foot, footnote number 184. What is the relevance of the color adjective? The writer keeps repeating the color adjective, which is black all the time, black, black, black. Uh, why? Uh, of course, the answer should be uh, clear to everyone uh, since he is talking about Africa, about Egypt, and about the East in general. Uh, uh, he gives people uh, those physical description, uh, th those physical details about their physiognomy uh, to um, depict for the British reader or for readers in general that image about. that part of the world which is backward which is not advanced which is which in which people are as exotic and as different as uh, unfamiliar like those ones okay and line one two three four five that is what the narrators want to know 
uh, I, I stressed this point uh, yesterday, uh, that the point that there are other <clears throat> narrators, there are other people uh, who uh, participated in the telling of the story, just uh, like uh, uh, the private memoirs and confessions of a justified sinner by James Hogg, like Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, and like Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, all three texts, and many other texts as well, uh, have been written in this manner in which the writer uh, avoids censorship by telling us that this is not his own composition, but uh, it is someone else's. It has been given to him by someone else. Next page, um, which is page 115. Uh, uh, the end of the first paragraph. In 10 years, who knows what may happen? Perhaps my wife may be in paradise. We know that his wife, that um, Matthew's wife, has um, insisted on the fact that she is going to marry her daughter only to a sultan, not to Yazir. Okay? And that uh, made her husband quite uh, angry, of course, because he uh, uh, had an agreement with his friend that these two babies would be later on engaged and then married. But she insists on that. And uh, uh, because of her insistence, he goes to his friend and asks for postponement. They have postponed this. They have deferred this for another 10 years. Let, let's talk about this after 10 years when they grow up. Uh, the agreement is between us, but uh, since my wife is not happy about or uh, comfortable about this, let us talk about this in 10 years' time. And he finds that this solution is convincing. And le let me uh, stop at this. This is very funny. Uh, what does he say? In 10 years' time, be only nafsu. who knows what may happen? Perhaps my wife may be in paradise. That is to say, she might die, and he would be spared this burden when he came in an agreement with his uh, friend. It reminds me of uh, Goha, if you know the story of Goha, when uh, uh, he was in the company of the king, and when the king asked uh, people attending, Yalla, <laughs> And uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. Um, I was saying that in the company of uh, the king, uh, he asked uh, people attending, plus Goha, who was there in the middle, uh, uh, if any one of them could teach the donkey to speak, to talk, right? Uh, everyone uh, uh, was surprised. Uh, everyone knew that that was quite hard. Uh, some people said, uh, yes, I can. In, uh, give me uh, one year or two years and I will teach the donkey to speak. And when he fails to make the donkey speak, um, uh, he was killed, of course. Uh, but there came Goha and uh, Goha uh, promised, yes, I would make the donkey speak, but give me a hundred years. Or uh, all thirty years, or all twenty years. Now, when he, uh, the king was happy and told him, "Yes, okay, take the donkey and make it speak, and I will be responsible for uh, all expenses." When he went back to his wife and told her the story, she was quite shocked and surprised. How would you say that? And uh, you know, of course, that the donkey is not going to speak at all, even after a thousand years. And he said something exactly uh, uh, reminiscent, reminiscent of this, reminding us of this. What, the, what it is saying, in a uh, hundred years' time, either the king would die, or the donkey would die, or I would die. So in all cases, I'm going to be the winner. Do you understand? So he benefited by uh, uh, the advantages and uh, uh, the revenues and the money given him by uh, the king. He was intelligent and funny at the same time. Next page, uh, I'm asking about the length of uh, the story. Why is it uh, that uh, long? Why is it not a, a compact one like Edgar Allan Poe said? Maratani, 
Edgar Allan Poe invented the art of the short story and talked about the single effect in the year 1839. Okay, this uh, story was published in the year 1854. Uh, that is to say, about 15 years or so, or less than 20 years, yani, uh, not much time passed before the development of the short story, before writers could make the short story less long or uh, brief enough uh, to match the requirements of Edgar Allan Poe. This is one. Also, the rhythm of the story. Uh, what is meant by rhythm? Rhythm is... I will check that later. Uh, but you know rhythm? What is rhythm? Do you find it quick enough? Do you find it um, the tempo or the rhythm or the speed with which the action moves from one event to another? Is it quite slow or is it... Uh, normal or is it uh, uh, quick enough? Okay, uh, uh, I guess if, if I uh, can uh, check the answers, if you have any answers now, no, no answers. The meme, it, it is not quick enough, actually, of course, uh, as I said, because not much time has passed, and uh, also because of the general tempo or rhythm of. Uh, life at that time, literature is the middle of the age, is slow, naturally slow, because in the middle of the 19th century, life was just as slow as this. And uh, and since the writer is also talking about Egypt, you know, about the Orient and the East, what would life in the East look like? In the eyes of a British writer, it would look slow. It would look, it would look drab and boring and slow moving like this. Remember? Uh, uh, of course, you have thy and the uh, and all uh, this stuff about um, um, uh, language, archaic language, that you have to pay attention to all the time. Uh, at the bottom of page 151, there is comment on the choice of names, like Lulu, uh, which is uh, close to the word pearl. Lulu, she is uh, all the time later on referred to as as what as a pearl the pearl the pearl came the pearl went the pearl talked uh, uh, okay uh, as befits or as suitable to the egyptian mentality so the writer is trying to uh, sound realistic or uh, to achieve very similitude as much as he can by uh, choosing names for from the egyptian uh, milieu uh, describing life as going on very slowly is also Orientalist, because this is how they envision time in the East. Uh, right, page uh, 152, the word Levantine. Uh, Levantine is uh, uh, repeated many times, as I said. Like at the bottom of the first paragraph, these Levantines... Uh, uh, this is stereotyping, this is generalization. This is talking about these, living in the East, intermarry until it is a wonder they retain any respectable qualities, mental or physical. Actually, I could stay uh, the whole day talking about this. Uh, and no, uh, for a writer like this to describe people in the Levant, not only in Egypt, but in the Orient in general, as intermarrying, marrying from one tribe to another, from one family to another, another from one country to another, uh, okay, but they do that <clears throat> all the time. They cannot keep any respectable qualities. And out of that intermarriage, the result is, what is the result? No respectable qualities. سواء كان الكلام ده mental or physical أنا معرفش هو قال الكلام ده إزاي وكان متريح وقال الكلام ده إزاي يعني how could you describe a whole race يعني the Orient in general هو is not talking about Arabs or Muslims or Egyptians he's talking about the Orient the Orient he's talking about us all as intermarrying and because of intermarrying يعني مثلا for an Egyptian to marry a Moroccan uh, for instance or for a Saidi to marry an Alexandrian or for a Tantawiya to get married to an to a uh, the result of this is what is 
the absence of any respectable qualities, whether these qualities be mental or physical. Do you understand? Very uh, queer description and uh, uh, very orientalist and very colonialist. In the middle of page 153, in the middle, in the East, the words of the aged are believed to be prophetic. Uh, uh, Sarah and your friends and, and, and all people attending, are you following? Maya? Or not Maya? Tabin? I do Great, thanks. So in the middle of the uh, and a, and a fish, fee, a footnote and about local uh, comment on the choice of names with Kalimana, Hanaba in the East. Uh, uh, the words of the aged elderly people are believed to be prophetic. The verge of the grave is there regarded as the verge of the future time, the point at which the mists of life begin to thin away and let in the beams of eternity. Uh, right? Uh, uh, elderly people like Matthews and uh, Zacharias or Zacharia, right, have to be or had to be listened to and obeyed. Yemkin dimna al marat al qalil al rajil da kan sadaq fiha, and nihna we. Uh, in the East, we respect the elderly uh, and listen to them and uh, consider their words to be uh, prophetic enough. Uh, right, and in, uh, at the end of the page also, the Orientals firmly believe. Yani, how could you as a writer, as one single writer, claim to be talking about the Easterners, the Levantines, the Orientalists or the Orientals in this uh, sweeping manner, right? The Orientals firmly believe that all disasters that have merely external causes are compensated even in this life. Uh, yani, uh, away from the meaning, and the direct meaning of this sentence, I'm interested only in uh, that kind of generalization that the writer has allowed himself. He is talking about Orientals and their firm belief that disasters which have external causes are going to be compensated in this life. Whether this statement is true or not, I'm, 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 uh, uh, this is not my point. My point is how could he generalize very easily in that broad manner. Uh, next page. Age had rendered her more fierce than ever and more confirmed in her uh, superstitious belief. He's talking about the wife of Matthias, right? Uh, she uh, uh, is that Lulu or uh, his wife? His wife. Uh, she's grown up. She's become uh, older and older. But the more she gets older, the more she gets obstinate enough and uh, stubborn enough. Like uh, the wife in the kite by Somerset Mom. The Camel retribution, however, soon came. Not many days afterwards, news was brought to Matthew's that a caravan which he had dispatched to Syria laden with precious merchandise had been attacked by the Bedouins. Rough and the Kermit Bedouins. Uh, the mere emergence of a word like this in a short story or in a work of art tells you a lot. It tells you about how uh, uh, the West looks at the East. The East is a place that is inhabited only by Bedouins. All of us are Bedouins. All of us, uh, according to them, live in the desert. And this is an example of the life of the desert in which caravans are attacked on um, merchants and merchants. Uh, send the caravans and receive caravans. And one of the caravans of Matthias that is sent to Syria has been attacked by pirates. This is the beginning of his downfall, uh, 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 I mean fi financial downfall. He's beginning to suffer and to lose money and to, to get poorer and poorer. Uh, and next page you have the word Shahbandar. Shahbandar to Gare Lahoua, the chief merchant in the city. Uh, okay, he's been taking loans from people, getting money from people, and unable to uh, pay back the money. The result is he would uh, uh, go to prison, for example, he would be complained against to the Shah Banda, uh, uh, as you can see. That was an uncomfortable season for the wife of Mathis. Even had he been unable to trace his misfortune to her, it is probable that she would have still borne the chief brunt of his ill humor. Uh, pay attention to this. This is quite interesting, right? Now, this is a comparison between Matthias suffering from a decline in fortune due to the developments in his 
merchandise and his trade, and the wife who, as an Egyptian wife, as an Arab Eastern wife, uh, cannot bear it. And at the same time, who uh, is the one responsible for his bad temper and his ill humor. We often profess to envy women because they are exempt from all pecuniary cares. But in truth, there is not a loss nor a disappointment of any kind which men suffer that does not embitter some hour of family life. I want you to uh, look at this closely. This is uh, one of the important sections of the short story. We often profess to envy women because they are exempt from all pecuniary cares. Pecuniary, that is to say financial or money cares. And women uh, are pardoned of thinking all about money or caring about money. It is the responsibility of men. But in fact, there is not a loss or a disappointment of any kind which men suffer that does not embitter some of our family life. But actually, if men suffer, then also women will suffer and this will take us now yani jump with me or jump back to page 189 89 okay and let us read this and with it with it we conclude our lecture today 89 Charlotte Bronte about uh, feminism encapsulated amen and this is what she says and she says it you know Almost at the same time, yeah, and almost in, in, in that uh, year or two years before or two years later uh, in Jane Eyre, it is in vain to say human beings ought to be satisfied with tranquility. They must have action and they will make it if they cannot find it. Millions are condemned to a stiller doom than mine and millions are in silent revolt against their lot. Nobody knows how many rebellions besides political rebellions ferment in the masses of life which people earth. Women are supposed to be very calm generally, uh, but women feel just as men feel. They need exercise for their faculties and a field for their efforts as much as their brothers do. They suffer from too rigid their restraint, too absolute stagnation, precisely as men would suffer. And it is not uh, precisely, exactly as men will suffer. <laughs> الصفحة بتاعت القصة كان إيه؟ كان إن uh, as men suffer, women also suffer. That is to say there is equality between them حتى في مسألة الإيه؟ السفرين. نقرأها تاني. They suffer from too rigid a restraint, too absolute a stagnation, precisely as men would suffer. And it is now reminded in their more privileged fellow creatures to say that they ought to confine themselves to making puddings or and knitting uh, stockings to play on the piano and uh, playing on the piano and embroidering bags. It is thoughtless to condemn them or laugh at them if they seek to do more or learn more than custom has pronounced necessary for their sex. If you manage, this is what I'm saying, if you manage to understand this quotation, you will certainly be able to understand the character of uh, uh, many women described actually in this, in this story and in the other stories talking about the Victorian age. I will explain that in detail next time. Uh, thank you so much for uh, attending. And I hope that you uh, got part of what I intended to explain. <laughs> if you have any questions before I leave, that I'm wrong. Questions? No questions? Us? Nefil? No questions. Huh? Any questions? Fine. Thank you very much. See you. I want you to complete reading the story and to think of the last quotation. Elena Ultari Sahit Tisantamanin Tisain. Very important for us to um uh, study and uh, to understand the mem. So no questions apparently. The mem. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.